This video is made possible by Vincero Watches, luxury handcrafted watches at fair prices. You can check them out at vincerowatches.com forward slash brain food. So in the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Mark B asks us, how do artists make paintings with people that have eyes that seem to follow you around the room? Art, as they say, is subjective. What one person considers a priceless masterpiece, others might see nothing more than a giant black square. But there's one very specific kind of painting that most everyone sees the same way. The kind with the weird eyes that seem to follow you around the room. So, well, what causes this optical illusion of sorts, and how do artists achieve this effect? It turns out, for even a moderately skilled artist, this ubiquitous gaze effect isn't a difficult thing to achieve at all. In a nutshell, all you need is a little bit of illusion of depth. So the person being depicted appears somewhat 3D despite being on a 2D canvas, and to direct the gaze of the eyes such that they would be looking at someone standing right in front of the picture. So, well, what exactly is going on here in our brains that then makes it seem like the eyes follow you even if you move away from being front and center? Well, as demonstrated in 2004 by a team of researchers from Ohio State University, as you move from one side to the other, the near and far points of the 2D image don't really change. These near and far points are defined as visible points that, if the image was three-dimensional, would appear nearest and furthest away from the viewer at a given angle. Summarizing their findings, co-author of the paper James Todd had the following to say. The idea is simple. No matter what angle you look at the painting from, the painting itself doesn't change. You're looking at a flat surface. The key is that the near points and the far points of the picture remained the same no matter the angle the picture was viewed from. When observing real surfaces in the natural environment, the visual information that specifies near and far points varies when we change viewing direction. When we observe a picture on the wall, on the other hand, the visual information that defines near and far points is unaffected by viewing direction. Still, we interpret this perceptually as if it were a real object. Thus, because the perspective shadows and light on the painting don't change as you move around. If the eyes in the painting would be staring directly at the observer if said individual is standing in front of the painting, it creates something of a mild optical illusion in your brain, such that the eyes will continue to seem to stare at you as you move to the side. In contrast to the eyes following you trick, if the artist tweaks the painting a bit such that the eyes are looking off somewhere else instead of directly out at a potential observer, no matter where you stand, the eyes will never seem to be looking at you. So this technique first began popularly showing up in art around the 14th century when the artist and architect Filippo Brunelschi introduced the art world to the idea of linear perspective. Linear perspective is painting with the idea of everything in the picture converging on a specific point on the horizon, creating the illusion of depth. This, combined with skill use of light and shadow, allowed artists to create masterfully realistic paintings, including sometimes of people that stare at you creepily no matter where you stand, and totally aren't Scooby-Doo villains stalking you with the intent to later murder you in your sleep. Now, just before we get into the bonus facts today, I do want to take a moment to tell you about Vincero watches. I'm wearing one right now, and this is a Vincero chronograph. As well as keeping perfect time, it also has a timer on it. Now, I picked out one with a blue and silver combination, a color scheme going on there, but they have loads of different options on their website. You'll be sure to find something that suits your style and your wrist size even. I have tiny little girly wrists, and they managed to get a watch that is a little bit smaller, so it fits me great. Great. Vincero believed that watches aren't about specifications and price. It's about detail and craftsmanship. And Vincero watches, they've got a ton of that. Look, this isn't some minimalist watch. You see plenty of those around. Vincero, they're not about minimalist style. It's about a classic look of a watch. And I think that the back dials on this, they really emphasize that. Also, by selling direct to the customer, Vincero can deliver a great watch at a much lower price price point. So go check out the full range of watches at VinceroWatches.com forward slash brain food. Use the code brain food on checkout for a special discount. And thanks to Vincero Watches for sponsoring. And let's get on with the bonus facts. Speaking of one of the most valuable paintings in history being just a black square on a white canvas, in 1964, a new avant-garde artist was introduced to the art scene in the Swedish city of Göteborg. This fresh new artist was Pierre Brasseau, and his work received absolutely rave reviews from critics as well as art fans. One critic in particular, Rolf Anderberg, was so overwhelmed by Pierre's talents that he wrote the following review about his work, which appeared in print the morning after.
after the exhibition. Bresso paints with powerful strokes, but also with clear determination. His brush strokes twist with furious fastidiousness. Pierre is an artist who performs with the delicacy of a ballet dancer. The reviews they were almost universally glowing. All but one, that is. One critic's commentary on the new artist was short and to the point. Only an ape could have done this. That dissenting opinion was unpopular, despite the fact that the art looked surprisingly like the art that you would see stuck to a refrigerator. It turns out, though, that that ape review more or less hit it on the head. Pierre Brousseau was actually none other than a young West African chimpanzee named Peter, who lives in the Boraz Dua Park Zoo in Sweden. The mastermind behind the hoax was one journalist called Ake Axelsson. Axelsson worked for a Swedish tabloid and came up with the idea of featuring the primate paintings in an exhibition in order to put the critics to the test. Could they distinguish between the work of true, highly skilled avant-garde modern artists when compared to the work of a random chimpanzee? It turns out the answer is mostly no. Although we should note here that the chimp probably wouldn't have been able to paint a perfect black square, so I guess there's that. And if you're wondering, once the hoax was revealed, the critic who had previously compared Pierre Brousseau with a ballet dancer, Rolf Anderberg, doggedly stuck by his assessment and stated that Pierre's work was still the best painting in the exhibition. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, check out our great sponsor, Vincero. Find a link below. And as always, thank you for watching.